Hey, hey, what is going on everybody? Uh, welcome back to the channel. I certainly hope you're having a fantastic morning. It's been quite a while since I last put up a video onto this channel, so definitely apologize for making you guys wait. But uh, in today's lesson, I would like to present you with a, a very classical computer science algorithm question. And uh, this question is really interesting because it does a really good job at testing your looping skills as well as your hash map skills. And these two skills are really important, especially for a job interview. All right, so with that being said, let me present you with the question inside of Swift Playgrounds on the left side. Let me shrink myself down to the corner a little bit just so you can see what the heck is going on. All right, so let's get started. Uh, on line three right here, we see a variable called sample string, and the string is a 1337. Hopefully some of you guys get this reference. On the left side, you can hit the play button and you'll see a 1337 inside of these quotes, which represents a string. Now this string right here called sample string, I want you to write a function that converts this string, so string of type string. We want to convert this string into an integer type like that. Uh, if you write this code and you wait for a little bit, you'll see this red error here that says we're missing a return function. So let me just fix this really quickly by returning a zero value like that. Now down below, I want to invoke this function using our sample string up here of 1337. So let me just pass that in as the parameter. You can run this again. On the right side now, you'll get the wonderful value of zero. So zero there. And obviously this is the wrong answer. Instead of getting zero, I would like to return a value of a 1337 instead. So the way to do this very, very quickly is to use the conversion of string to integer. So let's use int like that and wrap this using a string like so and pass in the string like that. So I'll just remove the return of zero now and we get the integer value here. And so I don't think I need this string. So let me just remove that. And now you'll have the conversion of your string to an integer like that. You can try to run this again, but you can't exactly do this because the integer conversion here will give you an optional integer back. So Let's apply some nil coalescing with the double question marks right here. And the default value, if you can convert your string to an integer, we'll just default it to zero like that. And once you have that little bit of code, you can convert your string of one through three seven to your raw integer, just like that, right? You don't see a quotes anymore. Uh, that means you have your uh, integer one through three seven. Now, if you put an ABC in front of sample string, and try to run your code again, uh, you'll get the value of zero because the conversion of this to an integer doesn't exactly work and you'll get a nil here, hence returning your default value of zero. That's how the nil coalescing works. All right, so what you're going to be asked inside of a job interview is to solve this problem without the string to, so string to int conversion code. And so, I'll let you think about how to actually do this right now for a couple of minutes here. And uh, what I would like to do is to remove the ABC from the string. And uh, I'll show you how to handle incorrect strings in a little bit here. But first, what I'd like to do is to break this problem down into a very simple algorithm that I'll run right now inside of my function. Uh, the first thing I'll do is to declare a total variable and set this guy equal to zero return this inside of our function of, uh, let's see, return total like that. And now what you can do is run this conversion function and you'll get the value of zero, hopefully. So that's what we get, zero on the right side, and that looks pretty darn good. And so what I'm going to do is apply a simple, so simple algorithm to solve our challenge. All right. So again, the whole point of this question is to first test your skills on, let's see, four loops. And then the second thing is to test your uh, hash map understanding. All right, so hopefully by the end of today's lesson, you guys will have a better understanding of both of these topics here. And now what I'm going to do is to actually show you how I'm going to walk through the solution one step at a time here. Uh, if you look at uh, this string 1337, you can actually break this down into, let's see, a series of calculations, right? So let's see, 1337 is actually equal to 1000 plus 300 plus 30 
plus the value of 7, right? So 1,337. If you break this down even further, 1337 is equal to 1 times 10 to the third power, so 1 times 10 to the third, plus 3 times 10 to the second, plus 3 times 10, so 10 to the first here. And then finally, you multiply, let's say, 7 times 10, so 10 to the zeroth power is what that is saying right here. Uh, for those of you guys that don't know, 10 to the zero is actually a value of 1, giving you 7 times 1 at the very end here. All right. So that's pretty awesome. And, and now that you understand how I'm going to solve this problem using this little trick here, uh, the next question is, how exactly do I actually get this 1, 3, 3, and 7 from the actual string, right? Well, the quickest way of doing that is to use sample string or maybe use this string here. So let's take the string there. And you can execute a for each loop on it. You can hit enter one more time. You'll get each of these characters as C. And you can print the C value down here now. Running this again. Down in the console below, you should see 1337. So that's pretty good. But one problem or one disadvantage rather to this for each loop here is that you don't really get the index of each of these characters. And I really want to grab the index of let's say the 1 so that I can figure out these exponent values of 3, 2, 1, and 0. So let me show you how to do a better version of this loop or not exactly better, but better for this algorithm problem. I'm going to use a 4, and let's say i for index, and then c for the actual character here. And let me iterate on, let's see, in string.enumerated like that. So string is this guy. Enumeration will provide us with the index as well as the character inside of this loop here. And let me show you exactly what this is doing by printing out the i and c. I'll remove the earlier loop because I don't really want to see it anymore. And now the conversion will show uh, two different values inside of our console. Let's take a look down here. We have the 0 index corresponds to the 1. And then let's see, index 1 is 3, and then so on and so forth. So 2 is 3, and 3 is 7. All right. Now, the next thing we have to figure out is how we can actually grab a hold of these exponents of 3, 2, 1, and 0 uh, using the i somehow. And I'll show you how to do that with a variable called exponent. So let exponent equals string.count. And I'll just subtract the value of i, I think. So let's see, i is that. Let me print out what exponent is now. So print out exponent. And I'll run this baby one more time. So now down below, you'll see that exponent is 4, 3, 2, and 1. And it's very close to what we need, right? 3, 2, 1, and 0. This right here is just larger than the actual value that we want by the value of 1. So I'll just subtract it. And running that again, we'll get the value of 3, 2, 1, and 0. So 3, 2, 1, and 0. And now all that's left is to actually multiply these characters of 1 through 3, 7 by our exponent and 10 somehow. And so the thing about this problem is you really have to declare some kind of hash map that allows you to map from your characters to some kind of integer value. Uh, what I mean is I want to declare some kind of hash map up here. And a hash map is basically a dictionary. So hash map is the uh, general term for a dictionary that you'll find in other languages. So make sure you understand that these two guys are very similar, if not the same. Now for your value map here, I'm going to declare the string or the character to the value of, let's see, integer 1. And then hit a comma. We'll do this for the 3 and 3. And then we'll also say 7 like that, so 7. All right, you can hit a comma at the very end if you want to do that. And now what you can do down here is that for the iterations of your loop of i and c, you can grab the hold of exactly what c corresponds to. So let's say c is 1, right? You can simply use this right here. So uh, let value equals the value map. So value map. And you can use the value of c in here. And this shouldn't get you your value of 1 or 3 or 7 based on what C is. But you can see this error right here. It says that you can't access this map 
using this type of string and int uh, because this C right here is actually a character. So if you type in C, look at your autocomplete, it's actually a character. Uh, one simple way of fixing this is to use a string to character conversion. So you can do this if you wanted to, but there's actually a easier fix here. So the easier fix is to make sure your keys for your value map is actually a character like that. And once you make that change, you can just use the value of C there. Uh, you don't really have to apply this to all of the keys inside of your map because uh, once you declare for the first one, it's automatically going to infer the rest of these guys as characters. And so right here is your value. And if you type in value right here, so value is actually optional int. You don't really want to deal with these optional ints. So we're going to use an if let optional binding here just to grab the value. So now our value is a non-optional int like so. All right, so this is the value that corresponds to the actual character from our map here. And all I have to do is say total equals the value times 10 and uh, we need to use the integer exponent of let's see the exponent value like so right we would like to use uh, this calculation over here and eventually total will be 1337 based on this string up there but if you try to run your code right now uh, you can't exactly run this right here and you'll see that you get a value of 70. Okay, so with all of our calculation written out inside of our for loop here, you'll see that our convert function produces a value of 70, which obviously is incorrect, right? You might want to fix the total calculation here with a plus equal instead of just a equal. Let's run this guy again, and you'll see that we have a value of a 138, which again is not correct. I'm not exactly sure what this syntax here even does. If you wrap this guy into an exponent like that, uh, you can see your calculation changes by just a little bit here, and uh, we get 136. All right, so let me use a different type of calculation. So I'm going to say let num equals all this on the right side here. So I'll paste that in here, and then I'll change this to num, and we can print out what num is along the way with our iteration on the loop. Let me just run that to see exactly what's going on. We have 9, 24, 33, and 70. So really strange there. Uh, let me show you the correct solution to all of this. And let me say num equals value times, let's see, the pow, using this pow calculation here. The x is going to be 10, and then the y is going to be our exponent like that. So this is how you calculate a 10 to the exponent right there. And the last thing we have to do is to apply some conversion. You'll see this error on the right side says that you can't use this calculation because this left side is an integer. This right side over here at the PAL is a decimal. So this is the tedious part of converting your code to actually match with the types. The num is going to be that, and I'll just say total equals and as decimal number provided with an actual decimal from above. Your decimal is the num, and then you can say int value for this entire calculation here. And uh, now you can run your code again. You'll see that you have the value of 7 now. You want to use a plus for the total, and this should fix it for us. We now get the value of 1337. Okay, so I think that is the final implementation I want to show you for today's lesson. Let me go ahead and get rid of these comments there and there. And one final thing that you might also want to do is to check for these strings here and make sure they are valid. So let me put a 2 in front of the uh, 1 and I'll run my code again. So convert. You'll see that the conversion doesn't work because we don't have our 2 here. So 2. You'll have to fix your value map to include all of the digits from 0 to 9. Let me just pop in a 2 here. And I convert that one more time. You'll have the 21337. If you put ABC here, it's going to give you something strange. So run that one more time. You'll get 21337 uh, again. But if you pop this in here, ABC, you'll get the incorrect value. Uh, so instead, you get 21337000. Uh, what you have to do to fix this problem is to modify the signature of your function to be optional int like that. And now this conversion, you can return a nil value somewhere down here. So inside of my loop, 
if we encounter the character of something that's not inside of our map, we're just going to return nil. So hit the run there and you'll see that that provides us with a nil conversion. Alrighty, everybody, that's going to wrap it up for today's video. Uh, hopefully you learned something new in today's algorithm lesson. If you're interested in more about Swift development, make sure to check out the latest course, which is available in the description below. Inside of this course, we learned how to build out a Tinder style application where we can swipe these cards to the right, swipe it to the left. We can swipe it all the way to the right like that. If you hit on this like button, we'll see this like animation appear just like so. All right, so we're building this entire application using a lot of UI kit animations as well as some Firebase SDKs that allow us to log into Firebase using auth and store information using Firestore. Uh, so hopefully you're interested in that course and hopefully you check that out. That's going to be it for me today. I will see you in the very next video. Bye-bye guys.